This is going to be the most useless thing I've ever made. You heard that right. From the guy who brought you the Skulk Telegraph, Logic Gates with Fence Gates, and a Polygraph Machine, I bring you the Mechanical Watch. Something that's been technically obsolete since the 70s. But despite this, these things are still worn by people all over the world in lieu of much cheaper, more accurate, and more functional options for one reason and one reason only. They're cool. You see, instead of using electricity, or god forbid, a computer to tell the time, these things use nothing but springs, gears, and good old fashioned ingenuity to keep on ticking. What I want to do is recreate this mechanism as best as I can in Minecraft. Now, it's not going to be a perfect translation. I mean, for one, rotation doesn't exist in the game. And well, uh, that's kind of the basis of everything a watch does. But we'll get around this and everything else using game mechanics that mimic the main idea of what we're trying to replicate as closely as possible. So uh, where do we start? Well, I'm thinking we start with the mainspring, which is basically the battery of a mechanical watch. In real life, it looks something like this, an S-shaped piece of metal coiled up inside a housing. You wind up the coil, which stores that energy, and then releases it, spinning the housing. By the way, these incredible visuals are courtesy of an amazing article written by Bartosz Chehanowski, which is where I learned basically everything I know about mechanical watches. Link to that article is in the description. But back to the mainspring, we have a couple of major issues. Neither springs nor rotational motion exist in Minecraft. But don't worry, I have a couple of ideas. Okay, so basically our goal is to store energy in some kind of mechanical way that will deplete given enough time but then also can be recharged at any given time to keep it going. And the best thing that I can think of right now is like a sand pillar like this, where basically this column here is our bank of energy. When I push this button, it demands a small amount of energy from the system like that. And then once we're depleted, it can actually still request energy, but if it doesn't then receive energy, then it's out. Actually, hold on, something just dawned on me. One second. Does the sand actually fall through and trigger this string, or does it land on top of the string? I really hope... Oh, okay, good. <laughs> okay, what a relief. <laughs> I really thought we were kind of screwed there. All right, we're good. We're safe. We're safe. Okay, so the real question is, how many pieces of sand do I want to store here? Maybe we start with, like, 20? So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12... 20 so that's our stack of 20 so that's what it will look like when it's depleted but we also need a way to bring everything back up and i'm thinking a bubble vader let's get a slime block here and a normal block there okay if i time this just right nope if i time this just right okay yeah it does work all right so let's see what that timing will have to look like for real just making sure this is not possible yeah, that's not possible. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Hmm. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh! Wait, that's perfect. Now let's see if... Ah, uh, that would be why... Yeah, oh, that's a cool splitter though, eh? Look at that. Okay, alright, we keep iterating, we keep iterating. Alright, how about this, ready? Yeah! There we go. Nice and simple. And you know what? How close can I? Yeah, I like it with four. Okay, cool, cool, cool. And then I'm thinking a bubble fader. So. All right, and let's cut out that much. All right, let's see how much it needs. Oh. Oh, it needs this. Okay, wait, how about that? Hit the button. Nice, 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 nice. If it's gonna fall into here, I think like the minimum that it needs is this. Grab some fence gates, just like that. Okay, let's see if this works. I really hope it does. Oh yeah, right away. Oh, uh, hello? Oh, it is confused. But yes, it does work right away. In fact, I think I can even put, oops, 
my goodness. I think I can even put the soul sand there, right? Yeah, it's like immediate. Okay, I I truly don't know what's going on with that. Uh, okay, it did eventually break into an entity form, uh, which is totally fine. All right, cool. So this is where the soul sand needs to be. Very good. Let us put water all the way at the top there. Now, I do wonder though, as it's on its way up, can it be pushed to the side with just a simple water stream? That is another question I'd like to answer. Let's see. Oh, okay, it's on its way up and... It seems the answer is no. All right, so that means uh, I need another slime block, I think, right? Tripwire, tripwire, there we go. And I believe I can just lead it in, right? There we go, up, and, oh! <laughs> okay, wait, so it can actually be a couple blocks lower. All right, let's try that again. Satisfying-ish, until it hitches like that. Oh, uh, huh? Oh, that was weird. Okay, so we do one more up, I think. I was actually really close in my original estimate then. Actually, unless we put a repeater here, you know, something like that. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Up and away and yeah. All right, Um, that is all we need actually. So now if I go ahead and fill this up, we are able to request energy by hitting this button, which will be done automatically in the future. If we then wind our watch, I mean, let's see how quickly I can... I'm guessing it'll have no issue at all, right? And so as I'm winding, I'm still able to do this, right? That makes perfect sense. Um, I wonder though, if this is sort of on its way cascading down while it gets reloaded, will that actually be a problem? I never really thought about that before. Let's see if I can recreate it manually. I'm not so sure. Oh, yep, there it goes. Yeah, so with really, really specific timing, it might actually break. Huh, are we okay with that? You know what? It's a really rare problem and it moves as well. You know, as it depletes, right? That timing of when that problem is actually gonna happen varies quite a bit. And it, it happens down here too, technically. So I guess as you use this thing, especially if you're winding it while it's running down, which probably will happen quite a bit, I guess you're just gonna lose sand a little over time and, uh, Eventually, it might not work anymore, but I mean, I guess that's kind of realism, right? I mean, even in a real watch, the spring fatigues eventually. I mean, just material wear happens, and I guess we can chalk this up to material wear. Look, I know I'm coping, all right, but uh, I, I, th I think this is fine. I think this is fine. But yeah, here it is, the mainspring in Minecraft. Kind of big, but I think it gets the general idea across, right? You have the amount of energy you have left, the amount of energy that's spent. You can come down here and spam the button to wind the watch. I'm pretty satisfied with it. Okay, so as far as gears are concerned, I want to do a piston feed tape just because that's the closest we can visually get to gears. But uh, for gear ratios, I think this is going to be a little tricky, but I have an idea. So I'm thinking of having a bunch of these next to each other, right? Like a gear train. And every gear in the line requests power from the previous gear every, you know, however many rotations. And then the very last one requests power from the mainspring every once in a while as well. So how do I build that out? I guess we might as well start by just hooking this up. I mean, does that actually work? Doubt it. Okay, yeah, it doesn't work. Oh, but wait, I think we could do this, right? Oh yeah, perfect. Okay, yeah. All right, I wanna make this symmetrical and also be able to be pulsed from both sides. So I think I just wanna tie these two together. And this line will just be pulsed. All right, there we go. 
Yep, nice and fast. I like that. Now, what happens if an observer is in the chain? Does that ruin anything? Hmm. I mean, not particularly. Oh, until <laughs> until it reaches this, right? And then, hmm. How about that? Just nice and simple. There we go. Can we do one tick even? Can we get away with that? Ooh, very nice. And then now, if we put... Oh, I wonder though. Let's make him look better. Maybe like use, use stairs, right? Because uh, they're gears. <laughs> I don't know, man. Yeah, there we go. That way we can actually do stuff like that, right? And hopefully we don't have any mishaps... Yeah, looks totally fine to me. All right, so how do I do this for real? Okay, so when we request energy from the previous gear, let's say we're in this position, right? This would need to be symmetrical as well. So that would put this one here, I believe. Yeah, I think I want it to be like in two halves, if that makes sense, just because Aesthetically, that would look better than having the entire thing populated, right? Let me put two of these next to each other and see how they interact. So now we have two of them next to each other. We only want to manually control this one, right? When it's here, it will request energy from the previous one. Sure, you know, quick and dirty. So yeah, when it moves forward, we want to grab power from here. Sure, maybe something like that. Okay, okay, so it wants power, gets power, which means these stairs probably will all be other observers, right? This will genuinely be rough if this doesn't work the way that I am envisioning. All right, so this one moves, keeps moving, moves again, moves again. Mm, yeah, that's a rough one. That's a rough one. Uh, let's just continue with this and just see exactly what happens, right? This is unfortunate side effect. However, this next move will request power from this. No, sorry, the next move will. And it broke. Oh, I wish I saw what happened. Okay, let's, uh, let's start that over. So continue moving, continue moving. Everything's working just fine, really great. Okay, yes. So it will actually, okay, it requested power from here and then it actually moved forward. That's good news. I'm wondering to avoid them facing into each other and causing a clock. The best thing to do perhaps would actually be to make these vertical perhaps? I'm not so sure. Let's see if that keeps working. Hold on a second. We are continuing to move that along. There we go. I think I like that, that makes sense to me. Do we care that this is also powering this? I mean, it's kind of the only way, isn't it? Okay, to tell you the truth, I'm not a huge fan of the fact that every few rotations will get a double rotation, but if I mentally follow it back to the pallet fork, there still might be a way to get it to work. Hold on, let me actually like for real fill this in real quick. All right, let's see what happens, right? So this is moving, it's moving, it's moving. There we go. Oh, did I just fall? I... Um, <laughs> okay. Huh, so as it turns out, these guys didn't even fire. Actually, it was just this one that didn't fire. I mean, maybe I wanna do two ticks then. Okay. Um, really didn't like that somehow. Oh, is it because it has to round the corner? It might be because it has to round the corner, bro. Okay, without rewiring too much, I think I have a solution. Okay, so I just kind of rotated everything 90 degrees and hopefully that makes everything work just fine. So let's see what happens. Here we go. It's going business as usual. Okay, cool. Next one, what's gonna happen is this one's gonna spin. It's gonna request power from this one, which is going to request power from the mainspring. 
Mainspring is going to give it that power, which is going to spin this one a second time and then spin this one in turn. So we're gonna have the speed of the game and let's click it one time. There we go, request power. If only, if only. Also, this is wrong. All right, here we go. We're gonna try that again. Cog moves, request power. Request power from the mainspring. Mainspring gives it power. Moves both cogs one position. Yes, dude. I will say the big flaw in this is that even if the mainspring runs out of power, it does not stop the last cog from just continuing to spin. So maybe my implementation there needs a little bit of work. But in general, I think we've got the main idea down. Hold on, let's let's try to get that to happen one more time. Look at how many rotations we're making per sand, right? Okay, here we go in real time. Never mind, here we go in real time. Yeah, that's really cool. Very cool. Timing wise, it's gonna be rough though, I gotta be honest. But I think the mechanics make sense, right? It's sort of analogous to real life. So yeah, what I have here is more of a proof of concept than anything, but it does have quite a few flaws. And this is where I need your help. If you have ideas about future components or improvements to the existing design, join my Discord server at the link in the description. I'll be there actively brainstorming right alongside you, and who knows, your ideas might make it to the final design. And if you don't know how a mechanical watch works, don't worry, I don't expect you to. I've linked Bartosz Chehanovsky's article in the description, which is also the rough order that I'll be following as I build this out. Oh, and of course, subscribe so you don't miss what comes next. And that's it. See you in the next one.